My name's Emma Morris and I'm a consultant clinical psychologist here at the Anna Freud National Centre for Children and Families where I work mainly with families and young people involved in care proceedings or post-adoption or those families where there's uh, parental separation and a lot of conflict between the parents um, and they're involved in court. Confidentiality is basically um, about privacy. It's about what your therapist shares with other people outside of your room and what is kept private between you and them. Um, and sometimes it can be really useful to share information, but it's just as important that you feel safe and secure in your, in your session and that you can trust your therapist and don't worry that they're going to go away and tell everybody everything that you've just, you've just talked to them about. So the decision about whether to share information or not kind of depends on a lot of things, including your age. So much younger children, if I was seeing a much younger child, say a five-year-old or a six-year-old, and they told me about something they were worried about, I might say to them, look, I think it's really important that I let your mum and dad know about this. And if they were worried about that or they didn't want me to do that, I'd listen to them and, and sort of bear it in mind, but I wouldn't involve them so much in that decision-making process as I would an older child who developmentally is much more likely to be able to understand the pros and cons of me sharing that information. So I might have more of a discussion with them about whether it's a good idea to share it or not. And they really have more of a say. Um, there are kind of general rules and cutoffs. And I mean, certainly if you're over 16, you've every right to say, I don't want you to share that information. I want that to stay confidential here in the room. But a therapist has to take into account a a young person's developmental stage and whether they're able to make those sorts of decisions in their best interest or not. Sometimes much younger children, 13 and 14, are able to make those sorts of difficult decisions. And there are some occasions where older children find that um, developmentally aren't at a stage uh, where they're able to do that. And I think probably the important thing for young people is where they're not sure or where they don't um, where they're not sure about whether information will be shared or not, or they particularly don't want a piece of information shared, to have that discussion with their therapist. Um, some therapists and some settings can differ slightly in terms of how they approach confidentiality. So maybe even it would be useful right from the beginning of therapy to have a discussion about how confidentiality is going to work in your relationship with your therapist. Um, there are situations where we override confidentiality um, as therapists and that's if a young person or a child tells us something that makes us really worried that they are going to be uh, they're at risk of serious harm or that someone else is at risk of serious harm and in those cases we have a duty to break, uh, to break that confidentiality and to share that information so that we make sure that that young person stays safe. We always try and tell them first if we're going to do that, but, but our main priority at that stage becomes keeping them safe. Well, that kind of links to what's been said about confidentiality. So the therapist, your therapist, has to balance respecting your confidentiality with providing you with the best help and support possible um, and sometimes it can be really useful for all other people around you and other people involved with supporting you, your parents, if you have a social worker, a teacher, to have a better understanding of what's going on for you um, so that they can help you a little bit better and support you a bit better. They don't have to know everything that's discussed, every little detail, um, but it can be useful sometimes to share some information with them so that you get the best help that you can. But that should always be done in collaboration with you and with your parents. And really, the only information that needs to be shared is that information that's really going to help them to help you. Um, the exception to that being uh, if we hear information from you that leads us to become worried that there's a serious risk to you, that you or someone else is at risk of serious harm. And at that point, we, we will share information just to keep you safe, really. Um, 
It might be that other services know that you're being seen without necessarily knowing all the details of what's talked about. So the person who's referred you to a service will usually receive information about what the outcome of that referral is and what support you've been offered without necessarily being given all the information about what's been talked about. And I think pretty much all CAMs will write back to GPs um, and let them know if a young person is being seen and, and what treatment's being offered for that young person. Your therapist's job, if you like, is to try and protect your confidentiality, protect your privacy and help you feel safe, but also to help you get the best help that you can so that you can start to feel better. And one way of doing that is to work together with your parents. Usually parents want to understand their children better and they want to help their children better. So the job becomes then for the therapist to talk with the young person about what information shared. And they only need to share information that they think is going to be helpful for that young person in feeling better. Um, and together, the young person and the therapist can make a decision about what's shared with their parents. And definitely, the therapist isn't going to go away and tell your parents everything that's just been said in that session. It's, it's something that you decide together. And your therapist will have advice and ideas as well about what might be useful to share. Um, and then to, together you decide. And if you can, if you and your therapist can find a way to work together with your parents in helping support you and helping you feel better, then all the evidence shows that you're going to recover more quickly. Um, so that's the ideal, really, that you feel safe in your session, that your privacy is respected, but also that you and your therapist are working together to help your parents to help you. Um, well, no, your, your school doesn't have to know. Um, certainly your school doesn't have to know every single detail of everything that you're saying in the session. Um, and your therapist needs to have your permission and your parents' permission to inform the school about you coming to therapy and uh, about any problems that you might have. Um, so no, they don't have to know. And a lot of young people get really worried about their school finding out about their private life and, and what's talked about in therapy. Um, but like with confidentiality, the decision about what might be useful to share with a school is something that your therapist doesn't just make on their own. They, they, if you've given your therapist permission to share information with the school, and your parents have, then you together decide what it might be useful to share. And like with having the support of your parents around you, sometimes it can be very useful to have the support of the school around you. So if, for example, you're really anxious and you're going to therapy for anxiety, it can be really useful for your school to know that because if you're not going to lessons, they could be making assumptions about you not being committed to your work or whatever. And if they understand you're anxious, then maybe they will respond to you slightly differently. And your therapist might even be able to give them some really useful advice about how to help you in school. So no, they don't have to know, but it can often be really helpful to tell them little bits about the sort of help that you're getting and why. And you and your parents can be involved in deciding what's shared with the school and why. Children and young people who talk about their problems with their friends and with anybody really um, tend to feel a bit stronger. They feel like they're, they're better able to cope. They feel kind of like they've got some support around them. And sometimes you can actually be really surprised that you think you're the only person going through something and you talk to, to a friend about it and you realise that they've been through something similar or they know someone who's been something similar and you can feel much less alone with the whole thing. Um, so it's really important if you can talk to other people to, to do so but it can be really difficult as well because, you know, at school or whatever, people don't tend to talk about this sort of thing very much um, and you can be worried what will they think of you or you could feel embarrassed, you don't know what they're going to say. Um, and I think maybe a good way to start is to test the water a little bit 
with a friend. So maybe have a conversation with them in more general terms about what makes you feel a bit sad or a bit low or, or, or maybe kind of a particular type of problem and see how they respond to that. Um, and then over time, maybe you can start to talk to them a little bit more and more um, rather than just making the decision, right, I'm going to tell Alex and then just telling them everything all in one go. Uh, you can start to worry about what's going to happen the next day. So building up conversations gradually is um, really uh, kind of feel, can feel like a safe way of, of talking to friends. And on our website, we've got some useful advice and resources on the helping someone else pages.